What up, fam? Today, we're gonna learn how to make this badass leather dice pouch. Stay tuned. I start making my template by drawing some seven inch in diameter circles. Then using a light to see through the paper, I fold the circle exactly in half, making sure to crease a strong line down the center. Now starting on that crease on either side of the circle, I measure three inches up and draw a straight line. Then I connect those lines together at the top. This will leave us with the shape for our side gusset to the back. Now I just cut them out to be able to use them as templates for my leather. I did this twice as you're gonna need one for either side of the bag. Now for this project, I have this really nice piece of chrome tan leather. Now as you can see, when compared to veg tan leather, chrome tan is really loose and almost more fabric-like, which makes it perfect for a bag gusset like this, but it does have the downside of not being able to hold any tooling. Setting my patterns into place, I trace out the shape and then cut them out carefully with some sharp shears. So because I do want to add some tooling design to this for some interest, I've decided to add some veg tan leather to the center. To that end, I use my strap cutter to cut a 3 inch wide strap of some 8 ounce leather I had laying around. To figure out how long I needed the strap to be, I used a fabric measuring tape to measure from one corner of my gusset all the way around the bottom to the opposite corner, leaving me with a final measurement of 17 and a quarter inches. In a pinch, you could also just wrap your strap around the gusset and mark where it ends. Now using a four-prong punch, I punched holes all along the outside of my gusset, keeping careful track of exactly how many holes I made, as I'm gonna need to make the other gusset exactly the same, and also put just as many holes on both sides of my veg tan leather. To prepare my veg tan leather for those holes, I run a groover tool down the sides, then I follow those lines to punch exactly the same amount of holes that I had punched in the gussets. Next, I started drawing out the simple design that I wanted to be on that piece of leather. I decided it would be on theme for this show to go with kind of a cool knotwork tree. And once I was happy with that, I scanned it and printed it so I wouldn't destroy the original while tracing. To get this design on my leather, I first wet the leather down with a sponge and cover it with some saran wrap. Then I lay the image into place and begin tracing it with a stylus. This leaves the indent of the image directly onto the leather. I then cut that image in using my swivel knife and then go back over it with a bevel stamp just to give it more depth and separate it from the rest of the piece, resulting in this really satisfying raised design. Now, in order to help it stick out even more, I decided to use this EcoFlow Silver Stain. I simply apply it very carefully with a small paintbrush. Now, this stuff is really cool because it has kind of a sheen to it that helps it look metallic. It was my first time using it, and I am super impressed with how good it looks. Now, for the rest of this veg tan piece, I decided to make it black to help this tree stick out even more. So again, with a small paintbrush, I go ahead and I trace out the tree's outline with the black, just to make sure I can be super careful and I don't get any of that black dye onto my tree. Satisfied that my outline is a safe enough distance away from that design, I then go back in with a dauber and color the whole rest of the piece black. Sweet, with that looking real slick, I've decided to go ahead and color the side gussets a nice ox blood red. Because there's no design to worry about, these colored up really fast, and the chrome tan leather took to the color beautifully. I also decided to color the backs of all pieces black so that when you look in the bag, they'll be a uniform black color. Now with my color set in place, I've decided to add some Pro Resist to the top of it with an airbrush, just to add a little protection to the leather. This also gives me the ability to spread an antique over the top and fill in any small areas I miss with my paintbrush, yet not changing the color too much. Now it's time to sew everything together. And because I was so careful to make sure that all pieces had exactly the same amount of holes, everything lined up perfectly and I was able to run a saddle stitch all along the edge to combine the gusset with the decorated veg tan center. And already this leaves us with a cool kind of bag shape but we still need a way to close it. To do this, I punch holes at inch and a half intervals and add metal eyelets to them in order to protect the leather. Then I simply run some leather quarters through it and cinch up my bag. And with that, we have this amazing leather dice pouch that we were able to make from scratch from our very own templates. Feel free to play with this design a bit and make it as big or as small as you want to. I hope you enjoyed this project, fam. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, keep leveling up, you.